So Notion just announced a pretty substantial change to the way they handle database views and filters. I'm going to walk you through some of those changes, share what you can do now that you couldn't do before, and just highlight some of the funny things to be aware of as you are exploring these new features. So let's jump in. All right, so I have a fresh page here in Notion. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a linked database view. This is where the magic comes in. I'm going to type in slash CR, which brings in a linked view of the database. I'm going to hit enter. And you'll notice now that you are prompted to choose a data source. This is exciting because now you can actually mix different database sources into one linked database view. Just to show you what this looks like, I am going to pull in the library data source. And you can see here, there's a number of different views. So it's giving me the option to pull in existing views from the original database. And what's interesting here is I can actually kind of scan through all of the different views that are on the original version of this database. I'm going to click on online courses. So you'll notice there's slightly different features here than you would have seen before. I can click on layout and I can switch from table view to any of these other views. I'm going to leave it on table for now and just show you again, what is really cool about these new features. One fun thing that I can do is you can now hide the database title. This can be pretty handy for a number of reasons and really can clean up your pages. Now let's add another filter for only things that I've saved in the last year, maybe, or the last month. Now the one thing that is a little bit tricky, I think it's, it's not super intuitive, is the way that Notion is now handling their dates. So before you used to be able to say date is today, is on or before today, but you'll notice here is within, I can't choose the past week, the past month, uh, I, I think this is honestly the most frustrating part of these new features. There's lots of great stuff about these new features, but that is definitely a really awkward one. So in order to get a dynamic date, I have to click on these three dots, add to advanced filter, and then I can choose date is within custom range. I can say the past year. Now I'm going to mix a different database into this view. So I can add a new view and I'm going to choose notes and ideas. I'm going to choose recent. So you can see all of those properties are pulled in from that original database. So now I am mixing multiple databases into one singular linked database instance. This is so handy because now you can do things like show your tasks, projects, goals inside of one linked instance, and it really cleans up your pages. So this is just one example. So what I'm going to do is pull in my journal and I'm going to pull in today. I'm going to hide the database title. You can do that here. Great. And I'm going to set up a simple task manager. So I'm creating a column with my journal on the left. And now I want to bring in another linked database and I'm going to choose actions and I'm going to choose my tasks because this one's already filtered to me. So if I click on filter, I can see owner is me and let's add a couple other filters too. I don't want to see anything that's already done. So I want to see uh, done is unchecked and maybe I only want to see anything that is due now. I'm going to close this out. Now, what's nice about these new filter options is that I can actually open this up and choose any of these if I want to, but I don't really need to see any of those. I'm just going to do now, but just to show you how easy it is that you can now use this as an or filter. I can also do checked versus unchecked. I can clear that. And let's say completed by is me. So there's nothing here. But if, so if I decide to clear this, it, it shows as grayed out. So I can always reactivate it if I want to. I'm just going to save for everyone at the moment. So these are my tasks and I'm going to rename this to today. Then I can add a new view. In fact, I'm going to duplicate this view here. Let's say flexible. And in this case, I'm going to adjust the filter to say now and next. So those are everything that's kind of coming up over the next week can show. And I'm going to hide the database 
title. I'm going to do that here as well. Great. And you'll see that I can click on filter to show the filters or hide them quickly. So these are all my tasks today, flexible. Another thing I like to do is create callouts. So I'm going to organize this into a little bit of a dashboard. So let's say I'm just cleaning this up a little bit and let's say uh, actions. Great. Just to show you why this sort of feature I think is pretty darn great. And for this one, I'm going to make a call out that is just for knowledge base type stuff. Let's make that blue and add some books. And I can drag this into here. So now I've got library items and I'm going to hide this as well since it's already in the title here. Online courses. Again, these could just be active courses that I'm taking. And then I'm going to rename this to notes. Notes and ideas. Great. Great. So now all my knowledge related stuff is kind of tucked together and all my actions are here. So now I have a simple page where I can manage all this together. I can also now add projects. So let's, let's add projects and I can add all projects. Maybe I just want to filter this to owner is me and status. Maybe status is active. I can, I can kind of decide how I want to view these projects. I could say, show me only front burner projects or active projects. And I'm going to hide that database title again. So now I've got, and today, again, I might rename this and say today's actions. And then again, flexible, or you could do something like deep work and you could filter that only by things that are considered deep work or uh, low hanging fruit. Anything that's one Pomodoro or less could go in there. So you give yourself some options now for how you might want to view that data in a more helpful way. So now I have a nice little today page that shows me my journal from today, today's actions, and then anything that is from my library. I can again, filter this to say, maybe show me anything where the date has been created on or before today, or I could say, just show me everything that's been created today. And that way, anytime I add a new note here or a new library item here, it will automatically have today's date. One of the reasons I think this is so powerful is that you can prevent yourself from jumping around all over your Notion workspace. You can bring the data to you. So again, I've got all of my actions, my projects, everything is one click away, my knowledge garden. In fact, I might even go and add our documentation database so that I don't even have to jump in there. Great. Now I can say docs. So now we've got online courses, documents, notes and ideas. And just a quick note that at some point when you have too many views, Notion will start to tuck them away. So sometimes keeping those names shorter is ideal. But again, I just wanted to show you what it can look like when you pull in information that lives elsewhere into one single page, bring in the stuff that you access the most often into one dashboard. It's going to make your life so much easier. So I'm pretty excited about these changes. You know, I do think some of these filters are going to take a little bit of getting used to. I do encourage you to play. It's a lot more powerful. Overall, I'm very impressed with the new features. Being able to combine multiple databases into one view is pretty incredible. Do you think there's some clunkiness around the filtering? I do hope Notion does improve that, but it's still a leap ahead, I think, than some of the previous features. So there you have it. Those are Notion's new database features. I'm excited to hear how you are using them in your workspace. If there's anything you're not sure about, confused, want us to go deeper on, definitely let me know in the comments below. And my friend Kat Mulvihill and I are going to do a live stream exploring the different ways that we have been using it in our workspaces. So we'll be going even deeper into some of these features. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you want to see next. Don't hesitate to drop in the comments what you would love to see more of. Thanks for watching and until next time.